Good evening. December 8th, 2018. Tonight I want to talk a little bit about Rene Descartes. Descartes shows up around 1530 AD. About exactly 1500 years after the death of Christ. It's almost perfect. And to understand Descartes and the Renaissance and all the wonderful art and all the other things that came out of the Renaissance as well as the Church of England and especially the Vatican, the Catholic Church trying to dominate the world and take it over to get their resources. <clears throat> it's important to understand what happened before the Renaissance. It would be the Black Plague was the biggest thing, the bubonic plague. The plague still exists. About 2,000 cases are found worldwide every year. Tetracycline can work erythromycin. There are other drugs that can stop it now. Most people survive the Black Plague now. But when the plague happened, it happened for over 300 years. It wasn't like a month or two. And it deleted about two-thirds to three-quarters of the population in Europe. Part of the problem with the plague was unsanitary conditions. And what that meant was just they didn't have plumbing, they didn't take care of their trash, they didn't, some people just didn't understand good practices. Some people were just sort of ignorant, but they thought they could talk about it so they knew, but they didn't. It was like the ignorance we're concerned about, thinking you know everything when you know nothing. It's amazing ignorance. I know nothing, but I think I know everything, and I can talk about it, so it's real. And I have 2.5 children, and your government and you should support them for me. Hmm, interesting. Nonetheless, the plague was a support everybody situation, but that isn't how it went down. <clears throat> Nostradamus, as you know, Michelle Nostradamus, the Nostradamus, made the rose hip pill with other herbs for people to ward off. Rose hips are high in vitamin C. Ask a polar bear, they'll tell you. High in vitamin C. And he put other herbs in there to strengthen you and allow you to get through the plague. But other than Nostradamus as a physician who would write his quatrains later, and in secret too, um, it was an unbelievable thing what happened at the beginning of the plague, people thought it was actually demonic possession that caused the plague. And when their neighbors would show up with the plague, they'd just basically nail them into their houses and burn their house down. And once they found out what the plague was, it didn't matter if they thought it was the devil or not. They still burnt their freaking house down with them in it. And as time went on, enlightenment started to happen, but it took hundreds of years. And Nostradamus with his rosehip pills. And uh, more than that, uh, people were doomed. It was the Dark Ages, if you will. And it, it turned out to be linked up to trade. And the rats would bring the plague from country to country. And that's how it spread from the Middle East to here. Europe to here to the world. Middle East is where it started. And um, the reality was that uh, no one could stop the plague. It went on forever. The rats, they thought, were the ones that were infested. Yeah, they were, but it was the fleas on the rats that, that had the bubonic plague that made it so devastating. So, a little history there, a little longer than I wanted to go, but you know how it is. And Descartes has a couple things going on. And his Cartesian pro, you know, idea, the Cartesian principle, he basically tries to tell us that our mind is separate from our body. Now this sounds really simple. Our mind is separate from our body and archaic in some ways because we know damn well it is. But the soul can still not be pointed to just like Aristotle said. It's, it's not a liver or a kidney. It's not a brain. It might be part of the brain, but the soul is invisible as an organ. So the soul exists as consciousness between the brain from the brain and the body. You got to have a body to have a soul, even if the body doesn't work and you're in a vegetative state, your soul still resides in the body. Your neighbor to your mind is your body. And Descartes starts out, he has a mind-body problem, as I said. He's trying to figure out where the soul resides in some ways, but more than that, he's trying to figure out, is it my mind or my body doing this to me? Which is happening, you know? And he starts out by describing that God is an evil genius. 
And he says, God is fooling us into all of this. None of it's real. And it wants us to do these things because we should see it this way one way or another. And he talks about God as the unmoved mover, the one that hasn't been moved by anyone else except themselves. And how it comes down is at the end for five meditations, Descartes comes up, and you could spend a whole semester on this easily and maybe at your lifetime. Descartes comes up with, I think, therefore I am. God exists because I can think of it. And because I can think of it, God is happy. This is reality. In 1530, Descartes tells us, because I can think in general, God is real. And your soul is a part of your mind within your body. Your soul is divine. It is immortal. You're already immortal now. Descartes knew this is a good Christian. But more than that, St. Thomas Aquinas in 1275 had already said it before Descartes. When rational faith is where we're heading now. You get up to Kant and Hegel, you'll see it. And of course, Schopenhauer is going to blow it all apart and say, hey, we're in pain. Where the hell's the faith today? Anxiety and angst. But the beauty of Descartes is, I think, therefore I am. And God exists because I can think. And therefore, I am. Reality. Hmm. Once again, out of the dark ages, Descartes shines. Rene Descartes, genius. Peace, y'all.